Hello, hello, welcome. I am Kim Beagler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting here at home in Harrisburg, Oregon, ready to talk. Fiber, yarn, hand spinning. If you're new, welcome. If you're coming back, thank you. Thanks for coming back. I have got this episode, we have got a little bit of knitting talk, a lot of hand spinning talk, and wool talk. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Before I forget, just a reminder for any of you looking for a new spinning wheel that I do have a collaboration going right now with Revolution Fibers, that if you buy a new spinning wheel from them, you get my online course, Let's Make Yarn, uh, Hand Spinning for Beginners, you get that free. So it's a $147 value added um, that you can kind of subtract out from the price of the wheel. And I take you from A to the finish. We go to the finish line on spinning on a spinning wheel. So um, there is a link in my show notes so you can check out that deal. It's really awesome. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But okay, let's get into what I'm working on because that's why we're here, right? To talk about all the crafting things. So quickly, I do have some knitting. Um, I started this last week. You guys, I feel so fancy because I got my hair cut and it looks, it looks normal again. It's not quite as much of a hot mess. Okay, I have made progress. This is the, I'll just show just so that everybody can see again. If you didn't watch last episode, which you know, life happens, here is my, um, why am I forgetting the name? The Breakwater Beach Fest, you all. I have such horrible allergies right now. Uh, my head's not quite on straight, but I'm working through it. The trees are all pollinating. They have been, and for the past um, couple of weeks, I've been kind of in a fog, so, um, but we're getting there. Okay, so my vest is coming along. So here we are. I actually wanted to show you something which is kind of funny and I'm leaving it, but note to self. It's why taking good notes, not even in this, I knew what I was doing. Anyway, taking good notes is a good thing. So here is where we're at on my vet, on my vest. So this is bottom up. I have joined my ribbing because you do the back ribbing, then you do the front ribbing separate and you join them because they are two different lengths. The front ribbing, let me get my bearings here. The front ribbing is about an inch shorter than the back, which you can see there. Um, and then you're doing some rows of knitting and purling. And now I'm just like knit for the next rest of my life. Uh, I wanted to show you something kind of funny because I do knit continental, so I um, am not a thrower. I have been in my life, but I taught myself to knit um, continental, uh, which is fine. I can also purl continental, but it's a lot looser than when I purl. And here's the example, and I am not ripping it out, you all. So this first row of purling on the bottom, I knit continental, so more left-handed heavy. The top row, I knit right-handed. So I was do, doing the more of American style knitting, English style knitting, I suppose. Um, and you can see that's a lot looser, that two rib section than this two rib section. I'm not changing it, not changing it. Um, this yarn is so squishy. This is the Utopia Sustainable Wool. I've got some of it in my online shop. It's the DK weight and I can't wait. So, and I love the color. I think the color is gonna be great. Um, so now I'm just knitting away for quite a while and then we get to some cabling. So that'll be exciting. And it'll be a great project on the go for a while. So that's all I've got for knitting. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting to show you all a finished object. I'll show it, I'll, sh I'll try to show it next week. Because Sylvia, if you're watching, this is the project that you were like, whatever happened to that shawl? And I finished it. But you know what? I'm going to weave in the ends and then I'm going to show it to you. And I've got to figure out a way to block it because it's like 20 feet long. Okay, that's our knitting talk. What are you all knitting on? I'd love to know. Comment below. Let me know. Let me know. I'm always looking for new patterns. Um, okay. Works in progress for spinning. I've been doing a lot of spinning. I've been very spin heavy and um, supported spindle. I've got a new video for that for this week's progress. And I've been back to my cotton spinning. So a little bit about both. Cotton, I'm getting better. Uh, I'm getting better. You know, it's like with the supported spindle, it just takes practice and I'll have a good flow and then sometimes it's gone and sometimes it's back. But I did something crazy. 
check this out you all so this is a cone obviously of this is a single so it's just one single spun cotton um i'm not leaving it like this i actually am going to ply it but in patreon i think it was in my patreon community we were talking about store somehow storage bobbins came up and i do not remember who what why or when i think it was in our q a's and i was like storage bobbins what's that so I went down a rabbit hole and then we talked more about it in the Q&A because somebody else did actually do storage bobbins. Sandy does storage bobbins and I was like, what? So store, the idea of storage bobbins is you have these backup bobbins after you finish a single. So you spin a single that you're going to apply. So you're not leaving it as a single, but you're going to apply it. But in the meantime, you rewind it onto a storage bobbin. I had never heard of this. So I looked in my amazing, I'll name us, big book. I, I bought this one as a beginner, but it was way beyond me as a beginner. So if you buy it as a beginner, it might be a little daunting, but it is like one of the best reference books now that I'm further along in my spinning. So, um, so Alden writes, uh, the storage bobbin will be a better yarn package than the wheel bobbin because you have the opportunity to manually wind a tight and uniform bobbin. Consequently, rewinding improves yarn tension and produces more consistent layer for layer diameter when you're applying. These qual this is the great part, right? These qualities greatly enhance fast and faultless plying. Well, we all want that because let's face it, plying can get a little monotonous sometimes. While it's exciting, it also goes on and on and on and on. Uh, the uniform layer diameter that you put onto your, because you are nice and evenly kind of redoing your um, bobbin, means that the bobbin rotates at a steady speed with no speed ups or slowdowns caused by sudden changes in the bobbin diameter. So among other things, you also, okay, so let's get back. This is obviously not a bobbin. Okay, so I was cheating. You can go to Woolery and I will put, I'll try to put links in the show notes. I do have an affiliate link with Woolery too. So if you um, wanna support me and buy something through Woolery, I will make sure to put the affiliate links for Woolery and Revolution Fibers in my show notes. They do have storage bobbins. They're very inexpensive, like $8 a bobbin maybe. And they have this attachment that you can stick on a drill um, so that it winds, you put the storage bobbin on it, and then you have your other bobbin across the room or wherever, and you wind it on here. So that's what Sandy does. Uh, she doesn't have this exact brand. They do say at Woolery, it's not ideal for hand spinners because um, it's more for weavers and their bobbins are a lot smaller. They're not packing as much fiber on there. They do have another device. I cannot remember what it's called, but basically it's double ended. It's, you know, where, where the other thing I was talking about probably would cost you $30. They have one that will hold your bobbin on both ends. So it gets a lot of support and, and you can wind it with that. Um, I think that was like 200, 250, but I'll, I'll put it all in the show notes. So what did I do? I was like, oh my gosh. Like the first thing that my thought was like, this is like just another step along the way of not getting yarn faster. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my goodness, we are hand spinning yarn. Like, does this have to be a fast process? No, like take it down a notch, right? That's what we're trying to do. That's part of the joy in hand spinning yarn is taking it down notches. So I did cheat though because I didn't have anything and I really wanted to, with the cotton, give this a try because when I'm spinning my cotton, I am getting more kinks um, and little plybacks and things like that on my bobbin than I would normally get when I'm spinning wool because I've just been spinning wool for a long time. So I tried it with my cone winder that I have at work with the mill and it worked really well. You can see, now this is nice, there's no, it evened out all my kinks. I had it running really slow. Um, it evened all my kinks out. Everything was kind of just like tightly wound onto here or semi-tightly. Now, ideally I would have done this in my head. What I'll probably do, let me move there, is when I finish this second bobbin that I'm trying to crank on hard now, I'll let it sit on a cone and rest for a couple days and then ply these together. So they're a little more even as far as that rest factor, which may or may not be as important with cotton. 
what I decided for this is like amazing because I was going to be fighting this more when I apply it with all those little kinks and spots and weird things that were going on in my bobbin. So having both of these more cleanly plied, I think it's going to be a game changer for plying these together. The other thing that was really nice for me and maybe as a beginner would be nice is, um, I was able to realize where I was having problems. Like when my yarn would break was because I had kind of these bigger clumps, you know, which when you're with wool, lots of times you can get away with having those big clumps, but with cotton, because the staple is so short, a lot, if I had like big clumps, there was just not enough twist for it to stay together. So I learned before I spun a whole second bobbin, I learned don't just let those chunks go. Stop, fix it, start spinning again to get less breaks in my second bobbin. So um, all in all, I'd say I'm on board so far. Can I have the patience to do it with my wool yarn? Time will tell. Um, but getting one of those devices would make it, because otherwise if you're just trying to hand crank, that's, that's gonna be an investment. So there's a little about storage bobbins, spinning cotton. I'm excited and I will of course take you along as I, um, and I have a video of this. Actually, let's cut to that. I just wanted to show you kind of what I was doing at the mill, because it's a mill video kind of, um, show you what I was doing. So let's go to that. I'll show you as I get this all um, wound up onto the cone and then, there's my cat sliding across something. And then I will pop back on and we'll talk a bit about support spindle. Hello, Tabitha. Okay, I'll see you all in a minute. All right, you all, I am trying something new here and on the ground I have got a bobbin of my cotton spun up, hand spun. And what I'm gonna do is play with the idea, sorry, that's my tripod, of putting it onto a cone in lieu of a storage bobbin basically. So I'm trying to do the same thing, but um, let me scroll out, see, every time. So what I'm gonna do is, because I'll talk about storage problems. I'm gonna focus on this and I'll talk about storage problems in the next, uh, when I'm not doing this. How's that? Because now I'm sitting here thinking this through, like how am I gonna make this work? So what I'm doing is, I'm gonna pretend, whoo, we're gonna test my spinning. And hopefully you can see, let me check, you can kind of see where I'm going. I haven't used this in a long time either, so I kind of have to remember how to use her. Um, so we're going to test out and then I'm putting this into the cone and we're going to test out. I, we're going to test out and see how good my spinning is also because I'm not entirely confident of how well this yarn is going to stay together, but we'll find out. So I am going to feed this into here know that I need it. Well, we're going to try it like this. I probably don't need it to run through. That's not right. Just look at how long it's been since I've done this. Um, all right, so we're on the cones. I have the speed turned down low, so we'll see how this goes. Now we'll start to eat the speed up. So I'm hoping that this applies enough tension, without too much tension, um, that it gets some of my kinks out, which it looks like it is. So I'll take you off the tripod so I can kind of take you on the journey with this yarn. I'm going to put you back on. This is super cheating, you all. So there's my bobbin. It's getting run up through my machine here and onto the cone. So this is a cheater way to do storage bobbins, but what I'm hoping, because I do have a lot of kinks, I'm not an expert at spinning cotton, so there are some kinks in here that I was hoping if I can get them out here, it will make it easier to ply 
part of the goal of storage bobbins. So, let's see. I will not have you sit here this whole time. I have it running really slow. I could probably run it a little faster, but I didn't want to crank it and have my yarn breaking. Um, so we'll see. I'll be back. All right, little update here. I think you can, yeah, you can kind of see that happening where I get those little, it's doing a really nice job, let me pull back a little, of getting out kinks, I think. There's a little bit of tension on it. If I have it at this angle, you can kind of see some of them. There you go, and that does get worked out as it goes up, because there's just enough tension in these spots that it's doing the work for me. So here's where we're at so far. The lovely thing I didn't even think about with this is it's actually counting my yardage. <laughs> All right, I hope that was interesting. If not, hopefully you fast forwarded to right here because you can always skip chapters. Okay, let's get to supported spindle talk. So I wanted to show you, I don't have my support spindle with me, but I wanted to show you what I was spinning. I'm spinning it in this current video too, but my first skein of that beautiful uh, horn dorset that I've been spinning on there, shorter staple leg, getting better. I have a video for you. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I talk enough in the video. I did wanna show you, I've had a bunch of people asking about this little dish that I use um, to sit on my lap while I'm doing supportive spindle. And I got it off of Etsy. It's an egg dish. You put your egg here, it actually comes with a spoon, <laughs> which I did not know until I went to recycle the box and I was like, Oh, there's a spoon in there. Um, so, but I like what I like about it. And I have some older videos and I did order one of these also. I'll put a link also. I had like a little cushion one I talked about a couple episodes ago that just sits, it sits up like on one leg. But I really liked the idea of being able to prop this kind of in my lap in the center. For me, that just works well. Um, but I'll put a link to both. This was on Etsy, the other one's on Etsy too. Um, yeah. And it was like $15, handmade, beautiful, shipped super fast. So anyway, I'll put a link. Um, I'm gonna let you go ahead. Missing yarn, she must have slid across the table with the yarn. Okay, I'm gonna let you watch uh, where I'm at. I think this is about week three out of taking the online course. So let's see where I'm at. I really hope, I know that people are commenting both here and on Instagram that this um, has gotten them to pick up their spindle again. So I hope so because man, it's fun you all. It's really fun. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. All right, you all, we are back at it. I thought I'd check in with you all about this in case you are, I've had a lot of people commenting that they are learning uh, this craft also at the same time or struggling with it or maybe are a little bit inspired to pick it back up. So I thought I would do a video from this week to show you where we're at. Um, now I was talking with, um, I am not an expert yet, let's just say that, but you'll notice that spindle is spinning and I am making yarn. And something else that I am able to do now is, you know, when I run out of twist, which I'll get better at keeping the twist going longer, but I can also just grab the spindle now and get it started again without having to like stop and move my fingers. Whoop. Uh, so we're making progress, you all. And I applied my first little skein of this pink. And it's so lovely, so lovely. Uh, I'm not super consistent, but it is getting more consistent. And this is, I think we're at like day three-ish. I'd say um, day three, oh God, I wish. Week three, um, since I took Josephine's class probably. So, um, happening you all and I can see why this is a dangerous little craft and just for those of you um, looking you know I've kind of looked around it's not super easy to find uh, supported spindles and there's some people on Etsy a lot of times their shop um, 
has a waiting list or has interesting ways of taking orders, but they run at, you know, 60 plus dollars, I'd say, is what you're looking at, which is significantly less than a wheel. So that's nice. Um, anyway, I just whoop, wanted to share with you all. And what I could have done just then was just like pull a little bit, let a little, little bit of that twist go in and then kept going. But um, two of the things I'll say that Jessica, who is in my Patreon and she's just been in my community for a while, she picked up her support of Spindle and we were talking about it. And one of the things she said was she had watched my videos and she was like, I think my hand's down too low, meaning like down here versus up here. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like our hands get in our own way, right? The other thing I noticed is that I was, I don't, you don't have to have a super, like your leader doesn't have to be right here, right? You can have a longer leader. Hey, you all back at it. I um, am running out of storage in my phone because of all these videos that I do. Uh, so we're working on it. a new system for being able to take all of these videos. Uh, anyway. So the other thing I was going to say was that you don't have to have a super short leader, which helps kind of keep your hands out of the way a little bit. Like I was kind of always having my leader right here, but just for the same reason that I can flick, and of course I do it right there, but like you could have your leader out here because for the same reason I can flick halfway through, um, that didn't work. So anyway, those are some of the things that I have learned or talked about with people over the past week since I was on here last. So uh, if you're thinking about learning this craft, man, do it. It's, it's really fun. It's really fun. I mean, obviously it's hand spinning, but it is a very different tool. But man, can you crank and get some beautiful yarn out of it? So come on in, join the fun. All right, see you all in a minute. progress you all progress just think of where you could be in just a couple of weeks uh, i do have people asking about where to get supportive spindles that is the trickier question um there are some on etsy they're hard um i think a lot of support spindle makers are having a hard time keeping up with demand which is a great problem i mean there aren't tons of them to begin with oddly enough um i the company or the the maker that I am I have two that I have ordered both off of Etsy one was like it's like a five or six week out because he he kind of has what he has and then you order and then he makes it um so there's no back stock there's no inventory sitting there uh, I think occasionally he'll put up inventory anyway I'll put a link in the show notes to their who I bought from they're also the one that has the little cushion for your leg um I did order another one that one is on its way but it's like stuck in Salt Lake, um, apparently. So I'll have more information as I gather it. Uh, and if you all have sources for supportive spindles, please, by all means, put them in the comments because I know people are looking and it's not super easy to find them. So, okay, um, onward. Before I forget, I am going to very exciting stuff. As you all know, I mentioned earlier that I'm working on a collab with Revolution Fibers. They sell spinning wheels, weaving equipment, just, you know, they're a newer company that is doing all the things, trying to do all the things um, in the fiber community. So we, they were kind enough to ship me and let me test drive a Kromsky Fantasia spinning wheel. And I am so excited to try this wheel. Um, somebody had messaged me about, or I was messaging with somebody about new wheels and they were talking about a Kiwi or maybe a Fantasia. And I hadn't really looked at the Fantasia. I hadn't seen it, honestly, because there aren't a ton of Kromskis. I just don't see them around a lot. Um, so I went on the site on Revolution site and they had, so I messaged with them and I have one now to try out and I'm very excited. And I'm gonna take you all along on the journey a little bit, but it's kind of a beginner, I'm not gonna say it's a beginner wheel because I'm not sure, but the price point is 
lower than a lot of wheels. I mean, it's around 645 or so, I think, unfinished. But I have an unfinished one, so I'm gonna unbox it, I'm gonna stain it, and take you all along for the journey as I try this wheel out. I, I, I love to recommend wheels, but I like to actually use them before I recommend them. And this was one that I really wanted to try out and Revolution Fibers was kind enough to let me test drive this one for a little bit. So um, I am going to hopefully unbox that in the next couple days and start working on staining it. And I just want you all to see it's not as daunting. If you're trying to save money getting an unfinished wheel, um, definitely finish it before you put it together because I didn't tell my Kiwi and then seven years later, I finally did. So. It's hard to go backwards once you get your wheel together. Um, okay, what's happening at the mill? Fiber Club, Fiber Club. It's done, it's all in the mail, it's out the door, I'm obsessed with it, it's amazing. I could probably card this fiber for the rest of my life and be perfectly happy and spin it as well. Uh, I hope all my Fiber Clubbers agree. If you are interested in getting into Fiber Club, it's a monthly subscription of fiber plus a little gift every month. It's full right now but I do have a waiting list going and it does turn a bit. So I just have a couple, I actually think I have like three new people in, in the last two months, three to four. So it happens, it's happening. Um, just send me an email and I will get you on the waiting list. Uh, so next week I'm gonna show that, the processing of that fiber. I'm not gonna talk about it because not everybody's gotten it, but next week everybody will have it and um, I'll show the whole process of it. And other than that, I have a little video on Jacob wool that I processed out and it unfortunately is all gone. <laughs> but I do have another fleece that's going on the carter within the next couple days. So keep an eye out for that in the website. And um, that's what's going on at the mill. And I have a whole lineup of things. Now that Fiber Club's done, I'm kind of taking a couple down days, catching up, and then I'll be back in the mill, milling away on a whole line of other stuff I want to get out. So stay tuned. Okay. Um, as I've said before, Patreon is a great way to get early notification of things going into the online shop. Usually they know by a couple days early because it goes to them, then it goes to my newsletter, then it hits the social. So um, Patreon is a fabulous way or jump on my newsletter. Next fabulous way. Okay, let's go see some Jacob being processed and then it's time to go for the week. So I will see you in just a minute. Okay, we are at the Carter and we are processing up some Jacob. I am here, I promise. I'm just prepping a few things behind you all. So I am doing bumps, bumps, sorry, that was loud as I was saying that. And the bumps I just do in Jacob because I don't know, I just really like bumps. You know, I didn't think I did and then I started spinning from one recently again and I was like, wait a minute. I do really like this. So I have got, I basically just, oops, forgot one piece. A makeshift piece I have that keeps my bump winder kind of in place. It, things have shifted over the years. Okay, now we're ready. So I will, and I was, just to get, I need just a little bit of fiber to feed up on there so i'm just feeding it in i will use just a smidge of tape to attach it to that and we're set to go and it will just go back and forth across the bump winder across the bump and uh i'll let you see it says we're going backwards because you haven't actually seen the fiber on the carter I forget how absolutely gorgeous this just deep kind of charcoal color is. It's natural. This is just a Jacob fleece that I have. Now let's go backwards and look at the wool. Oop, I have to skirt around a few things here. All right, and here is our wool on the carter. So this is just natural Jacob. Um, they are spotted sheep, so they come up with all different colors but this is a pretty heavy in the dark browny black color and whites. And it turns into that charcoal lovely color. And uh, there it is. So there will be, I have a fair amount of this, so I think it will last for a while, I hope. This is a fabulous fiber for beginning spinners. So there you go.
Jacob. Oh my gosh, as always, I stop for a minute to like, you know, let the video play. Okay, um, Jacob wool. I mean, you can't go wrong with Jacob. Jacob is one of my favorite wools for beginning hand spinners to start with. And it is a dream down the road to spin. Also, I always am enamored by the color sometimes. I, I Sometimes I'll split it into whites and mediums and darks, depending on how big the fleeces are and how much of each color I have. And then when I get to just like taking it and blending it all, I'm just, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous wool. Uh, so get your hands on some if you can and blending it with other stuff. I've blended it with Surrey. I've blended it with regular alpaca, uh, Wakaya, I should say not regular. That's to say that Surrey alpaca are not regular. Wakaya alpaca. Um, I've blended it with mohair. It just is a fun, beautiful fiber. So all right, you all, that is all I have for this week. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And I will be back next week, all showing the Fiber Club Fiber, and hopefully there will be some left. And if not, I'm going to reach out to some of the shepherds to get some more. So uh, until next week, stay healthy, be kind, be kind to everybody around you, and make so many, like so many, so many of the pretty things. Just keep spinning, keep knitting, keep doing all the crafts that you love, and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.